I took this picture of my neighbor's hands a couple years ago because I needed an image for a card I was designing for a group art show called Rituals and Sacred Spaces. Using this image, I made the English version of the card, as well as the Czech version. The show was in August of 2012 in the southwest village of Horažďovice in the Czech Republic at the Galeria Califia. The name actually comes from California because the director is an American expat from California. The gallery is in the oldest part of the town, in a beautiful courtyard. This is a picture from across the street of the gallery. Here are some more views in that area. This is an adjoining courtyard, which is even more picturesque. Horasjevice is a quiet town. From the window of my little hotel room, I could see the town church, as well as a view of the town square. Rituals and Sacred Spaces was not about religion, but it was a starting point for the artists invited to the show. The show included work by Jan Petranek, an avid collector of traditional Indian folk art. In his room was a picture he took in India, as well as a large crate. There was a small hole in the crate. When you looked inside, you could see that it was filled with clay ritual figures. Also in the show was the photographer Natalia Vasquez. This is an installation in her room, and she also used some burned wood I found in a fire pit to write on the walls in Spanish. The Czech artist Veronika Rikterová was also in the show. She works with discarded plastics. This is a pagoda she assembled from plastic bottles. Each bottle here had a bell hammer in it, so when a breeze came through the window, there was a nice clunking sound. There were also videos by the Mexican artist Alejandro Gomez de Tudo and the Czech art group Rafani, shown here. I do not do a lot of shows, but one thing I have learned is to not call it in. So each time I do a show, I try to get more involved with the community, more involved with the process, and in this case, the journey to the show was very important to me, because there are so many stories about how people get to a show and the adventures they have. I looked at it as a pilgrimage. I flew from New Jersey to Stuttgart and took trains from Germany into Czech. This is a picture I took of an underpass in Nuremberg, Germany. After a day of traveling, I ended up in Pilsen in Western Bohemia. This is a picture of the old town square with a modern sculptural fountain. I was trying to save money, so instead of going to a hotel, which would not have actually been very expensive, I went to a dirt cheap place for foreign workers. The small room cost probably $12 for the evening. It was part of a cell, which meant I shared a bathroom with another room. It was pretty seedy, and I got quite depressed at night, but when the sun rose, the small space seemed less dangerous, and the morning view was nice. After a run and a shower, I went to the train station and took a train down to Horazdjuice. I love taking trains in Czech, and anywhere for that matter. This is a picture I took of a fellow passenger's basket of mushrooms she had picked in the woods. To document the journey to the show, I decided to draw my way there. I took two pocket sketchbooks with me, and then I tore out the pages and glued them together to make one long narrative. I started drawing when I sat down in the airport before I flew across the ocean, and I decided to jot some thoughts down. Sometimes I wrote in English, sometimes I wrote in Czech. Even though I've not spoken the language in a long time, I still have thoughts in Czech. But this was mainly to help kickstart that part of my brain. So one question I first asked was when does a pilgrimage, or any trip for that matter, really begin? I think it begins with the first idea of going somewhere. At the airport I was reflecting on the morning. I drew myself doing different chores around the house. It is funny to look at now, more than a year later, because what I wrote in Czech is not the action, but for example, black floor, unfriendly toilet, jungle grass, food on the wall. It concludes with me passing out on the floor. I was trying to recall how I got to the airport, and I see here that my father dropped me off. And then I made note that my mom did not come along for the ride because she had her knee replaced. The first time they did it, they messed it up, so they had to replace the whole knee. Then I started making note of the people at the airport, including a young woman in a Joy Division t-shirt and a befreckled man. Here I write about the difference between being on a pilgrimage versus simply traveling and then my travel plans, which is actually not the route I took. I bypassed Berlin on the way there, and went from Stuttgart to Pilsen, and then down to Horazdjewice. 
I drew the people in my row on the plane, an American student, a Japanese lady, and an American soldier stationed in Germany. I wrote here that it is dark, I cannot see anything, people are sleeping, and that I feel like a creature of the night. The notebook I started with already had a drawing in it. It was of a steam pipe system in my basement. I drew it to explain a leak in the pipes and how that caused rust mushrooms to grow. That's my term for the rusty buildup that forms around a crack in the steam pipe. When I told the Germans that I knew in New York that I was flying into Stuttgart, they all rolled their eyes. But it was a beautiful little city with nice surrounding hills. One interesting person I met in Stuttgart was a young German woman who had just returned from Comic-Con in San Diego with suitcases of comics. I guess here I was reflecting on a centipede I'd killed the day prior. My basement is loaded with bugs and they freak me out. But I do not kill them anymore. And then my mind wanders. Does a two-headed person have two passports? And do they need to buy two tickets when they go to the movies? I like Europe, but what I miss more in my life now is California. And I started thinking about how I was going to display the drawings. I was making an accordion book, but thought it would be nice to turn it into something more sculptural. In the end, I just stretched them out along one wall in the room I had for the show. I think drawing is a lot like traveling. Actually, I think there's a great connection between drawing and the physical movement of the body. Think about how we look at maps of places we visit. We scale down the distances in our minds and remember the routes from one place to another and interpret that into the abstraction of a map. This is my hat, and this is a picture of me drawing in my 2 meter by 2 meter room in Pilsen, which I remember as being a comforting activity to do there. I remember the relief of the rising sun. I got up early and exercised. I went for a run to the nearby woods. The first person I saw in the morning from my window was this woman. I am surprised to see that I wrote here that I thought she was a prostitute, questioning what kind of woman would come into this dodgy place full of hooligans for the evening. And how did I get here, I asked. I had an odd feeling in Pilsen, and after looking for a place to stay, I decided to go to the train station. When I got there, I decided to have a look on the other side of the tracks for more modest accommodations. I met this man, a solid worker, and a throwback to the time when they were on top of society. It was he who told me about the cheap place. He said it wasn't much, but at least they had hot water, he remarked. Here I drew one of my flip-flops, which are the most essential things to bring on a trip. Seriously, after a passport, it's flip-flops. There's also a sketch of a smokestack that was outside my window. On the left of the page is the pattern of the towel which the receptionist lent me. On the right is a drawing of a makeshift barbell set in the dark hallway outside my room. It was actually kind of ingenious. There was a steel rod and eight liter water bottles taped together on each end. I wrote here that normally I am thin, but before the trip, I ate everything in the refrigerator, including liters of milk and 14 eggs. And then finally, I'm on the train to Harajdjavica. I started drawing someone, but then got into a conversation with a woman who was going to the show. I wrote here, Konets, which means the end. And I wrote it on a horse because Kun in Czech means horse. It's just a silly linguistic stretch. So this is how I show these drawings. The room had a runaround knee-high ledge that it fit nicely onto. I did not think I was going to have a whole room, but rather niches around the gallery. When I got there, the curator told me to fill this room. You can see blue lines on the wall above the cartoons. Those are lines made by using a tool called a chalk reel line, which is basically just a metal box full of blue chalk with a string that you can wind up. When you want to make the line, you pull the string out, hold it taut, and snap it in the center. The curator helped make these. I think they are interesting because they are not drawn straight lines, which take time. They are formed instantly. The first snap creates a really dark line, and then subsequent ones fade until you re-chalk the line. Here is the tool. It belonged to my grandfather, who had every tool possible. He owned a hardware store in Virginia, among other things. So what I had actually proposed for this show was to make a shrine like I had done at my house and other places. Actually, there was a misunderstanding because I originally thought the show was going to be in Prague, and I kept thinking about all the things I found on the streets when I lived there, and the things which I had photographed two years earlier for a photo project. I have always been interested in non-religious shrine-like areas, like roadside memorials. There was a period in my life when I cleaned up my house and moved all of my sculptural objects outside. I concentrated them on the corner of my property on a busy road. 
and I gathered field stones, cobblestones, building stones, and more found objects. It became known as the Wall, where people could come, place their own objects, and take things they liked. It was always in flux, and it's still in flux. So this all got resolved into my deciding to make a shrine for the town of Horazhovice. I prepared some items. One thing, which was central to the room, was that I took the image of the hands which was used for the cards, and I had it printed on silk. I hung that in the only window of the room. It looks really nice, naturally backlit. I had also brought a few objects that I assembled together, but in the end, these felt detached from the rest of the space. Here is a look from the hallway at the shrine that I eventually assembled. The project clicked when I found my first object, which is a saw blade. I bent it so the two ends touched and nailed it into the wall. It looks like a trap, but also like a crown. I do not like the religious reference of a crown of thorns, but I really like it as an object. And like the blue lines, it was a shape that formed instantly because of the property of the material. With a lack of discarded objects, I gathered some burned wood and put them on the sconces in the room. And here you can see some of the found objects. I just read the website for the gallery and found this, which looked vaguely familiar. That's because I wrote it. Martin creates shrines of objects with discarded materials he finds around the sites where he builds them. While there is an element of Marcel Duchamp aesthetics, appreciating the design and perhaps beauty of a found object, the process is much more ritualistic in the way that the objects are collected, cleaned, and assembled. It is a method that is not only as ancient as humans, but it is not unlike the instincts of nest-building birds. The shrines Martin makes are typically public and collaborative. Passers-by are encouraged to take things from the shrine they want and leave behind their own keepsakes. The problem with Horazhevice was that it is a really clean town, and there was hardly any debris. I spent one afternoon and the following morning gathering things. In a town of hundreds of people, there were only a couple broken bottles. I found one derelict house with broken safety glass windows. I pulled the glass off the frames and used that. In the same house, I saw a curious metal cube through a broken window. When I reached in to grab it, I cut my finger, and it would not stop bleeding. I took a picture of it when I returned to my room. I used the straps of the cloth bag that I had for gathering items as a bandage, and included that in the collection. One more thing I had prepared was a large satellite print of Horazhevice. I put that at the base of the shrine and included some wildflowers. Here, the image is zooming in on the courtyard where the gallery sits. On the evening of the opening, people visit the chambered rooms and gather outside in the gallery's own courtyard. Here is a better shot of the courtyard. That's me sitting in the upper left. The curator gathered us and introduced us to the people attending the opening. In a couple of these images is a man wearing a red shirt and a wheelchair. He is one of the sponsors of the show, and he and I had a funny encounter. He owns a computer store in town that the curator and I had been in the day before when he wasn't there. We were speaking in Czech, and I said to him, I was in your store yesterday and it's really nice. He got a bit upset and said, that's not possible. And we went back and forth and then parted. We were a little annoyed with each other after the conversation on me insisting that I was in his store and his saying that that's impossible. Finally, it totally dawned on us that I was using the Polish word for store, which means basement in Czech. So here I am talking in Czech about the installation and we were still kind of laughing at each other, amused by it all. Now, the curated show is great, but my absolute favorite part of the show was a performance by Teresa Damsova. I first learned of her when I helped proofread and edit the Czech book Zde so Psi, which translates as Here Be Dogs, and read about her performances. I got in touch with her and invited her on behalf of the curator to be part of the show. Teresa and her friend drove from Brno, Moravia, to Horazdivice just for the opening. She did an amazing performance with her dolls for the kids. She makes all of her dolls by hand with ceramic heads, and she sews their bodies and clothes. According to her, some of them even speak languages she doesn't understand. Usually my favorite part of the show is to hang out with other artists on the night of the opening, but Teresa and her friend were heading back to Brno right after the show, and that was on my way to Krakow, Poland, where I was heading to see my family. I got a ride from the couple and sat in the back of the small car next to a basket of Teresa's dolls. We drove into the night through southern Bohemia and southern Moravia. They let me out at the train station late at night, but there were no trains left, so I left the station and walked into the city to look for a place to sleep. 